Hello everyone, welcome to this week's episode of Taking the Pulse. Uh, with me, Carlton Jeffries from the Digiterati. Um, Marie isn't here this week, she's lurking online, going to be answering your questions um, and any comments that you might have uh, remotely from uh, uh, our other part of our office. And uh, it's just going to be me on my, on my lonesome uh, doing your uh, show today. So um, Taking the Pulse is here to keep you informed on the key digital channels, uh, and the key platforms and the latest news over the last week. Um, we're, going to, we're going to be covering an awful lot of stuff today, so I'm going to whiz on with it to try and keep this as brief as possible so it's of maximum benefit for you. Um, first of all, we're going to kick off, as usual, uh, with Facebook. Uh, Facebook branded content uh, is a big topic this week. And, uh, um, well, over the weekend or towards the end of last week, there was a blog post uh, circulated by by somebody who will sh shall remain unnamed. Uh, nothing to do with us whatsoever, but it was it was very very misleading. Uh, there was an awful lot of stuff in that blog post that uh, that gave people the wrong idea of what this new policy that Facebook introduced actually at the beginning of April, uh, what it all meant. Uh, they they updated their policy on the twenty sixth of April. And it's caused all manner of people, all manner of problems and, and, uh, and people doing their nut, frankly, and freaking out over this uh, over the last few days. Marie, as you can imagine, being our Facebook guru, knowing all things Facebook, uh, she has delved into the detail on this and she has all the nitty gritty over on our blog. But just to summarise this, um, Facebook uh, is not stopping Facebook page owners uh, from sharing content to other blogs and other pages or even sharing affiliate links or things that are being promoted. What they are doing now is they are uh, actually saying that if you are a verified page, uh, a blue tick verified page, so that's typically people like public figures and the big brands and so on, now, if you're one of those blue tick verified pages, then you do need to disclose the, um, the fact that it's sponsored paid for content. And you also need to use a new tool that they have launched, which enables brands to tag the content so that the brands who are mentioned in the content or who are being paid can actually get some visibility over that paid content. Uh, this is great news actually for those people, those types of people, because for, for, uh, because now brands can actually see how the effect that they their sponsorship uh, of other celebrities and so on is actually turning into uh, metrics on Facebook, whether that's uh, shares, views, uh, purchases, whatever, whatever the conversion they're tracking. So uh, that's great. If it, if you have a grey tick verified page, this does not currently apply to you. Now we will say that it could apply in the future, but right now it does not. Um, so they could well enforce this in the future for, for grey tick verified pages, but not now. Don't panic everybody. This is uh, only for the blue tick verified pages. So grey tick verified pages and non-verified Facebook pages just carry on as normal. And if you head over to our blog, there is a little, um, uh, the very nice uh, deep dive into this into this subject that Marie has put together. Marie's there in the background. I can see that she's just posted up a, a comment there for you. So please do feel free to ask questions. Either myself or Marie will be there to answer them for you. Right, moving on. We've got the next item. Um, they, oh, I skipped a bit, too, skipped ahead too far there. Oh, and I touched my microphone too. How unprofessional. Um, Facebook uh, numbers update, user numbers update. So last week, as you probably know, it was a big week in Facebook world um, because, uh, because, because it was, a, it was Q1 up, uh, results being announced and uh, they did not fail to impress, um, unlike some others which we'll cover in a minute. So Facebook have announced uh, massive growth really, frankly, for, for something that's such an old network. Uh, in user numbers, they now have 1.65 billion monthly active users, that's users who log in at least every month uh, on, on Facebook. Um, that's up from 1.59 billion users last quarter. So they're continue, continuing to grow quite considerably. Um, they have 900 million uh, users on Messenger and 400 million on Instagram. Well, there's no big change in those numbers, no massive change in those numbers right now. But the thing is that, that they're saying that people spend on average 50 minutes uh, a day using the suite of Facebook apps, the core suite of, uh, of Messenger, Facebook app and Instagram worldwide. So that is a key a key indicator of how well Facebook is performing. Uh, back on the blog, you'll see there's a roundup, Mark Zuckerberg's uh, shared uh, uh, status update, so you can get all the detail on the latest stats if you want to get them straight from the horse's mouth. Sorry, Zuck, for calling you a horse. Um, and moving on to the next thing, um, we're going to talk about uh, a, a, a little survey that I picked up on last week. 
This is so for SMEs, SMBs, SMBs are a US, more of a US term, SME in the UK, um, advertiser survey. So this uh, was, a, was a little survey that was actually carried out in uh, North America. So uh, apologies to all of our UK viewers and European viewers and so on that um, it doesn't cover those pages right now, but I think it's pretty indicative of the of the of the state of state of play here. But of the people who are uh, the Facebook pages that are paying uh, that are, are, are that are in existence across B two B and B two C, um, only fifty percent of those people um, those businesses pay any money at all to advertise on Facebook. Most of them just do the organic posting. Um, and um, th of the people who do pay. 61% of those, those businesses that do pay to, say, boost posts or advertise, get likes, whatever it is they're doing, only 61% of them spend as much as $50, or they spend $50, $50 or less, probably quite considerably less, per month. So uh, basically, it's, uh, it, it, there's, there's an awful lot of businesses who have not got wise to the fact that basically to get your stuff seen on Facebook, you gotta pay. Um, sorry about that, guys. Um, I mean, we're working on a number of things at the moment to help educate you how to, how to get better visibility in the newsfeed if you don't pay. Um, but paying to get your content seen, your key content, especially that that you, that you want people to take action on, so to convert or whatever, sign up, purchase so on it need you need to pay for that stuff because Facebook's not going to show it to, to people organically uh, keep tuned for new announcements coming up later uh, in the month for uh, what we're working on there but anyway um, so that's a little survey the, the full survey of course is linked on our blog head over there to go and have a look at it I'm just going to check in and see how we're doing uh, see if there's any comments while we're um, while we're here um, da -da -da. And uh, how are we doing? I'm sure that Marie is helping you out if there's anything to look at, but um, no, there's nothing there at the moment. So we're doing good. Um, yes, thank you, Marie, for posting the link to the blog post in the first comment. I see that's what it is. My eyesight's not good enough to see right over there. So moving swiftly on, Facebook study that, uh, that we picked up on that's, um, that looked at the ad image choice uh, that you use in your ads. So. Um, typically people say, oh, people work better and this works better and that works better. Well, there was a, there was a little study that came out that, um, that considered this and actually they did some tests. They did a, a short piece of work on this and they found that actually a lot of the myths are absolute nonsense and that if you choose, um, if you choose random images of, of absolutely nothing, you, you may well get a better result. Now, it's quite interesting because, because as, as advertisers ourselves, Facebook advertisers ourselves for ourselves and for clients, we're always looking at these types of studies, but one of the things that was deeply flawed of it in the study, in, in, our, in our opinion, is the fact that it was really, the main thing is it was tricking, tracking clicks on the ads and not conversions. And those two things are wildly different. So um, we would never really advocate just measuring clicks uh, or even when it's a test scenario like this. I mean, you want to really be looking at what, what images actually convert uh, to a sign up or a sale or whatever your objective might be. Unless, of course, your objective is just brand awareness and pure awareness and getting people to, to visit a website or whatever. But uh, interesting article, um, again, linked on the blog. Go over there, head, uh, check it out. Uh, we also put, put a Facebook post up about, about that one a week ago. So um, lots happening, of course, in Facebook world. And um, uh, it's not just all about Facebook, although we do love Facebook, uh, as you probably can gather here at the Digitorati. But um, we also uh, cover all the digital channels and the next one we're going to look at is YouTube. YouTube is my, YouTube is my son's favourite uh, favorite channel, the channel of choice. Um, well, they've introduced a, a new type of ad unit in the last few days called the bumper ad. And um, bumper ads are really um, like a pre-roll ad that you can't skip. It's six seconds long and uh, it's a completely new type of unit. You normally can just skip the first, after the first few seconds of a, of a pre-roll ad on YouTube, but the new type of ad you can't skip. Uh, now, if you can get, if you're an advertiser and you've got some existing video content that you can whittle down into a really sh short soundbite, a six second clip that really gets your key message across, this could be an exciting type of opportunity. Uh, get, your, get your message out there. Um, we spoke to uh, Donna from SearchStar, our, our favorite PPC agency and uh, a partner agency of ours, uh, and she is very excited about this new ad unit, um, and uh, she thinks that actually it's probably going to, to, to be very, very popular and successful ad unit for, for a lot of uh, advertisers, and also that 
that there'll be a lot of video agencies who are sort of scrabbling to produce a new um, creative for this type of ad unit for the six second slot. So, uh, so yes, go and have a go, especially if you're already advertising on YouTube, this, this could work really well. I mean, YouTube are saying that it will work in tandem with longer adverts, longer form adverts. Um, so um, uh, go check out what we've written about that and the, the information that we've shared on the blog. Uh, but just to make you aware, if you're a YouTube advertiser, it's probably a, a new unit you wanna be checking out. So moving on to Twitter. It was a big week in Twitterland last week. Um, but for all the wrong reasons, sadly, um, I've got a little a sad face emoji here. I'm going to do the sad face emoji for you because it's not good news. We're over at Twitter right now. Basically, they announced their, their Q1 results um, last, uh, last week, as did so many of the big tech companies in the US. Um, and really, they're flatlining or, or, or approaching flatlining. Their user growth is, is up very poorly. Um, uh, I haven't got the figures right in front of me at, at the moment, but it is terrible. Um, they have hardly grown at all since the last quarter, and frankly, they've hardly grown at all in the last five quarters. So they're really slowing down. Um, they are also uh, finding that their ad revenue is significantly down. So brands are just not advertising so much on, on Twitter right uh, right now. Um, this is, is this is pretty tragic for Twitter. We love Twitter. Everybody loves Twitter in the marketing world, but it seems that consumers and now brands are starting to say they don't really love Twitter. Now there are some there are some some markets, some verticals that are massively active on Twitter. Not not least uh, media, sports, and uh, and of course tech people, tech, the tech sector. Uh, whether that's developers or journalists and so on and so forth, massively popular. So if your audience is is in that in those markets, then then great. Um, but uh, but for everyone else, it, it is starting to really slow down, and uh, uh, and it's it's even you know it, it's a customer service tool, a support tool, and so on. But even Facebook's looking to try and steal that away from Twitter right now with with all the effort they're putting into Facebook Messenger and the Messenger platform for brands to be able to do uh, to respond to customer service customer service issues with automatic replies, uh, um, chatbots, and the like. So with a heavy heart, um, I am afraid to say that I think Twitter is starting to to show signs of its demise, let's say, uh, even if it's not kind of dead. And uh, I'm afraid it might be unkind, but I've put that nice little, that, that, that sort of dead tweety, tweety bird there um, to sort of show how I feel about that right now. But there you go. Uh, make of it what you will. Go and check out the stats and see what you think. But the media is pretty much uh, digging the knife into to Twitter right now. So uh, the, the next platform to, to be covered off today in taking the pulse is um, and incidentally, if you if you are finding this useful, uh, please do share this with anyone else that you are uh, that you might have following you or your fans or whatever. Uh, that, don't just go and blanket invite people because uh, your your followers might not be um, might not be that impressed. But if you've got other digital marketing or small business or big business owners who are involved in digital marketing, please subscribe to our live notifications for these for these uh, videos and also share it out so they can see it. Um, they'll probably thank you for it. Um, so moving on to Periscope, Periscope owned by Twitter. Um, it hasn't been particularly great news really for them this week, even though they did announce uh, uh, or did uh, release a new version of the app called, uh, a, new, a version of the iOS app, I should, I should say, which includes a new feature called Sketch. Now Sketch just allows you to draw on the screen while a broadcaster is broadcasting. This is actually a feature that's been available for, to Snapchat for quite a long time. And, uh, uh, and it's also um, something that Facebook have announced announced last month that they're going to be bringing to uh, to Facebook Live very very soon as well. It just means I can sketch things on the screen as a broadcaster. That's all it is. Um, Periscope also added um, much deeper analytics for broadcasters as well uh, last week in the, in the same update, which means that people can broadcasters can now identify which part of the broadcast was the most popular part. Um, which is which is very useful. You can see the metrics and, and how what is most engaging in your broadcast. Um, but really, Periscope is not doing too great. Uh, they don't release numbers, but uh, but we know that uh, obviously Facebook Live has stolen its march. Um, and you know, it, of course, it, 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 Twitter owning Periscope not a great week for Twitter and Periscope in a way. Uh, I'm I'm rudely saying that that Periscope could probably do with a bit of an endoscope, uh, having a look inside and seeing what they can do to fix their their woes. 
um, because they need to move fast and break things in my view. Uh, if you're a Periscoper, yes, uh, then do let us know what you think of the updates and how you think that Facebook Live is, is going to threaten to, to snatch away your audience because we're really interested. We, we were, by the way, big fans of Periscope when it first launched in February last year, but you can see that with 1.65 billion users on Facebook, compared to a paltry uh, number of users on uh, Twitter and Periscope uh, by comparison and very slow growth, it's, not a, it's a no-brainer really. So that's, uh, that's our round of a Periscope moving swiftly on. You may have received uh, an email from Google Analytics last week and, uh, um, and th had a sort of a WTF moment thinking, what on earth is that about? Um, well, Google has kind of confused people a little bit by saying that, uh, that Google Analytics was now going to be secure. And you're thinking, well, heck, well, it wasn't secure before. Well, well, what was all that about? Well, all it means is that really there's nothing to do. Just carry on as normal. They've just made, they've just forced the, the connections between your website uh, and Google Analytics through a secure connection, irrespective of whether your website is actually secure or not. So uh, that means whether it's served by HTTP or HTTPS. It doesn't matter to Google Analytics which of those two it is, all connections to its Google Analytics service is now, are now secured. So kind of, kind of, you can kind of ignore that email as a nothing email and just move on. Uh, that, uh, moving on, as, as I say, to LinkedIn. And I'm gonna take a slurp of tea right now, so if you just bear with me one second, I'm gonna take a slurp of tea. Um, from my lovely trusty like mug. Um, uh, LinkedIn. LinkedIn, they haven't made any big moves this week, but they quietly um, released a feature which is called, and I have to really look it up because it doesn't trip off the tongue for me, Pro Finder. Uh, it's a, a feature called Pro Finder, which is going to be rivaling Fiverr. Pro Finder, Fiverr. It's very similarly named, isn't it? Um, sort of, uh, kind of. Um, uh, basically, it has a lot in common with Fiverr and people per hour and all of those types of um, freelance sites where you can get jobs done cheaply and quickly, uh, it allow, it's going to allow you to basically list your services. If, as an individual, list your services on LinkedIn, on the ProFinder network, uh, and sell them to people who might want to, uh, who might be looking for them. So that could be accountancy, it could be insurance, it could be design, uh, marketing consultancy. Uh, uh, there's a whole raft of different sectors and different uh, things uh, that uh, services you can offer um, on this new ProFinder service. So. We think that could be quite useful. I mean, we may even dabble in that ourselves uh, as the digitarati to see what um, what impact that has. But if you're watching and you're a, a small business, a micro business, a freelancer, uh, or if you work in selling advice, basically, or coaching, this could be a useful new channel for you. So keep your eye on LinkedIn ProFinder, maybe sign up for it and go and, and go and check it out. And let us know how you get on if you do. That's LinkedIn. So finally, uh, in today's episode of Taking a Pulse, uh, Pinterest. Um, a small update uh, from Pinterest last week, and uh, this is of interest to those viewers in, in the UK because they are expanding a feature they call Collections uh, out of the US and into the UK market. Not just the UK market, uh, they're also, I think, France, J Germany, Brazil and Japan on my notes here. Um, so this is the first time they've expanded this feature outside North America. And Collections is basically, it's a curated, um, uh, collection of, uh, of, of pins. Uh, it's, it's actually cur curated by Pinterest, so you can't force this to be in the, uh, the collection. But if you are developing pins, if, you are, if you're creating pins that appeal to a specific collection, and they could be uh, you know, a specific collection on, on the types of things that they are that they're, that they're um, curating, then you could well stand a chance, a, choice, a chance of getting it into that collection. Go and check out the blog post that's, that's uh, linked t uh, to find out a bit more detail about that if you are pinning a, a pinner on Pinterest as a business, because it could be quite useful to you because it gets you more exposure and that's what we're all after. So that pretty much sums up the roundup for the day. I've gone longer than last week because there was quite a lot more to talk about than last week. Uh, uh, please, um, if you find this useful, please let us know. It takes a lot of effort to put together this weekly roundup. We're gonna do it anyway, but we really wanna be useful to you. So let us know how, how you find the show. Um, let us know what improvements we could make. Is it too long? Would you like a bit more detail? Um, uh, also, uh, if you if you 
if you do dislike it, uh, if you do like it, sorry, um, then then share it with your with your followers, people at work, and so on, to let them know about it, so they can get the benefit of it. And uh, at the end of the video, and in the comments in a moment, there'll be a, a little link for you to sign up to our email. Uh, we send out an email every week, um, pretty much every week anyway, which will notify you whenever we're going to be doing these broadcasts, and it will let you see the catch up, the replay of it, if you've missed an episode, so you can get the scoop on that week. So please do sign up to get notified for that. Um, the link will be in the comments by Marie in a moment and also at the end of this video. When it's uploaded to Facebook as a replay, it will be at the end of the video. So that's it over, over and out from me, Carlton Jeffries at the Digiterati. I hope you've enjoyed it and we'll catch you next time. Bye. <laughs>